Good day there viewers and welcome to my channel called Vintage Time. My name is Cliff. Come along and join us and learn how to cut gems. So let's scoot off home and cut those gems. Finally made it back home, but let's go inside and have a look at my faceting machine and get started. Before I start faceting, one of the questions people ask me all the time is what type of faceting machine do I have and it's called a Facet Star. It was manufactured by an engineering firm in Melbourne, Australia. A big hello to all my regular subscribers and viewers. It's really nice that you can drop in once again to watch another episode of How I Cut Gemstones. And if you're new to my channel and this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, I'm certainly glad that you can also join us in the unique hobby of how gems are cut. In this episode I'll be faceting one of the most popular designs that there is around called the Portuguese cut and in point of fact this is like a triple feature where I'll be faceting some smoky citrine quartz and I'll be faceting two pieces of rose quartz and they will all be Portuguese cuts. So the first piece of gem rough material is this beautiful piece of African golden honey citrine. And a friend and I went out last week to have a couple drinks and we went out to a really well known gem museum called Rockery. And he bought that there for $18 and he asked me whether I can cut a gem for his daughter as a present. And I thought well why not and I think this will make a lovely gem if I get it right. So a couple of days later this piece of translucent rose quartz arrived in my mailbox and it was sent to me by a gentleman called Tony. So thank you Tony. Tony happens to be in my faceting group. But it's quite coincidental that this piece arrived because I had already preformed another piece of rose quartz that comes out of my collection of gem rough material. But this piece is not as clear as the piece Tony sent to me. So I'm going to be really intrigued to see what both of these gems look like once completed. Having faceted rose quartz several times in the past, I've always found that the outcome of the gem once completed is never as good as I anticipated, always looking lifeless and milky. So let's take off and the first thing I need to do is preform two of the pieces of rough as one has already been done. I'm using a 100 grit diamond plated lap and this one's quite worn. Just be careful if you're preforming on a brand new 100 grit lap, it will really want to grip that stone and you're more likely to have the gem fly across the room. And not only that, it will really chip the gem. So just be aware of that. And of course, if you're faceting really tiny gems, you don't want to be using a 100 grit lap. So here we have the preformed gems and I've wet them with a little bit of water to make them look a bit more translucent. And incidentally, I'm making this video before I've even completed the process of cutting these gems. So if some of the gems aren't there by the end of this video, then you've probably caught on that something has gone wrong during the cutting process. So day one will be me preforming the gems which is done and then gluing a dop stick onto all of these gems and allowing it to cure overnight. So day one was all about the preform and getting the dop sticks glued onto the gems. So we're on to day two now but before we start I want to talk about the typical design for quartz for the Portuguese round. In my opinion the critical angle is way too low. And I've cut this design you see right now in front of you several times before and the critical angle at 42 degrees allows a little bit of windowing around the outer perimeter and you just do not get enough return out of this particular gem because I feel the table is way too big. So what I've done I've modified this design because this is the design that I've cut in the past and I find it works a lot better with the Portuguese round. 
I've found in the past when faceting quartz, if I've faceted below the critical angle of 43 degrees, I've found that the return in scintillation has been a lot less. In point of fact, by increasing the critical angle on this design by a bit over one degree, so I'm cutting at about 43.10 degrees, it's increasing the output in scintillation and light return by 20%. Although quartz is a wonderful material to facet, the trouble is it has a low refractive index and it needs to be faceted correctly to get the highest amount of scintillation out of a gem. Unfortunately, with the original design, it would have been probably perfect for topaz and certainly if you're using most synthetic materials, it would really be a, a showy gem, but with quartz, not so. Another design in the series of the Portuguese cut is called the mini port and I really think that's even worse than the original design that you see earlier on. I faceted that before and that simply does not work very well with quartz either. The unknown factor for me is how will this design work on rose quartz? So here we have a computer animation of what the citrine should look like once faceted. Let's facet the pavilion. That's the pointy end of the gem. So I'm ready to start, so I'll be using my 100 grit topper lap and that will sit on top of my master lap and I'll just screw that down. Now I'll be cutting the largest gem first, so the name of the game is to cut away as much material as quickly as I can, so using a coarse lap will do that. If I was to use a fine lap it would take forever, so let's get cracking. So the first set of 16 pavilion facets were cut at 60 degrees and as you can see it's pretty rough at the moment but the whole idea was just to remove that material because that will save a lot of time. So what I'm going to do now is change the topper laps and the good thing about these topper laps they're all the same thickness and width so I don't need to change the height of the mask much. I've still got the previous gem in the quill so I'm going to just smooth out those rough facets a little bit more. So the protractor is still set at 60 degrees and hopefully this should do the job but I might have to downshift to a 600 grit lap, we'll just see. So I've gone over this particular gem with a 240 grit diamond topper lap and it's still looking a little bit scratchy but that doesn't matter. What I'll do, I'll take it out of the quill and replace it with another gem that's dopped and I'll be faceting the second largest gem which is the rose quartz and what I'll do, I'll take out the 240 grit lap and exchange it with a brand new 600 grit diamond topper lap. So I'll have to break this lap in, so I guess a medium sized gem is a good gem to start with. 
So incidentally, I haven't changed the protractor angle, so I've just raised the height of the mast on the dial a little bit, and then I'll lower it onto the lap, and off I go. So because I'm faceting 16 pavilion facets, all I have to do is go through the same index numbers. So as you can see here, I'm dialing through all the different indexes. I'm starting off with 2, then going to index 6, index 10, index 14, 18, in increments of 4, all the way up to index 62. Depending on the type of gem I facet, I will always choose an index with the lowest amount of indexes on it. So in this case I'm using my 64 index and the reason being is that the least amount of notches means that you're less likely to make mistakes. So meanwhile, while I was rambling on about the index wheel, I've taken out the third of the gems I'll be faceting and this is the smallest gem, the one that Tony sent to me and I've left my protractor angle once again at 60 degrees and then I'll facet the 16 pavilion facets at exactly the same index numbers. So I've cut this gem with a 600 grit lap and it's a little bit scratchy so I'll remove that lap and leave this gem in the dop and then go over the facets with a nice smooth 800 grit worn lap and you can see that things are dramatically changed, the facets look a lot cleaner and smoother. So this is a really big step because it's quite a deep pavilion as you can see so a lot of material had to be cut away so the next step is to facet the girdle
So the girdle outline on all of these gems have been cut. Remember to set your protractor arm at 90 degrees and you may have to be a little bit selective on the type of disc you use depending on the size of the gem you're cutting. I tended to use a 600 grit and then an 800 and move down to a 3000 pre-polished disc. So let's move on to the next step. So the first set of pavilion facets were cut at an angle of 60 degrees. Then I cut the girdle facets, so I set the protractor at 90 degrees and cut all 16 girdle facets. Now I'm cutting what we call the P2 facets, so this is the second tier of the pavilion and I'm cutting those at 56 degrees. Then the next tier will be cut at 52 degrees, then 48 degrees, and then finally the last tier will be cut at 43.10 degrees. So as you can see, you can see the 16 facets where I've cut the second tier and I'll go over these facets again with a pre-polished disc. So the second set of pavilion facets have all been pre-polished on all of these gems. In the following scenes you'll see that I've faceted the third tier on the pavilion of all of these gems. So with the smallest of all of the gems, the lighter, more transparent rose quartz, I haven't cut the first set of pavilion facets near deep enough, and I thought I would be a little bit smart by trying to save material, but it hasn't worked out. So I've gone ahead and just faceted the entire pavilion, but it does come with compromises, where I've had to facet another two tiers on the pavilion. So instead of five tiers, I've got seven, and unfortunately, I've probably got very close to the critical angle where this gem could be windowed. I don't know yet. I'll find out later when I see it in the final reveal. But, you know, one thing about faceting, when you make mistakes and it happens to the best of us, you have to be very adaptable. So what I'm going to do with this particular gem, I'm going to polish it and then complete the other two gems later on. So with this particular gem, I'm going to polish it on my tin lap using 50,000 grit diamond compound and one drop of sewing machine oil.
So the pavilion on the small gem is fully complete now and polished. So what I'll do, I'll go ahead and facet and polish the other two gems. And I'll have a little break with the narration, but I'll drop in some subtitles if I need to. And I'll come back later with the narration. Time to facet the crown, that's the top of the gem. So we're on to faceting the crown and what you see now is the larger gem in the transfer jig where I have to attach another dop stick to this gem and take the original dop off so it enables me to facet that crown. So here you see a close up of it here. So I've removed quite a bit of material by using the 100 grit topper lap but when you're using such laps you need to know when to stop. Now I'm forming a girdle outline so you can see it's starting to chip a little bit so now I'll start to use a 600 grit lap and then later on I'll use the 3000 pre-polish lap. So the first set of crown facets were cut at 55 degrees and now in this scene I've cut the second set of crown facets and the protractor was set at 45 degrees. So the third set of crown facets will be cut at 40 degrees 
and I'm using a finer grit lap because I don't need to cut as much material. So in this scene here I've cut the third tier of the crown facets at 40 degrees then I set the protractor at 35 degrees and you can see that I've cut the next set here and finally I cut the last set of the crown facets at 30 degrees. So last but not least the table needs to be faceted and I'm using a 45 degree angle adapter as you can see here. Sometimes I'll use the adapter sometimes I won't. Sometimes I get lazy where I just want to set the protractor at zero degrees, leave the dot within the quill and just fasten it straight down at a vertical angle. Well folks, this project is now complete and we have what we call the final reveal where you get to see these gems in all their glory.
So that's the end of another video. If you enjoy my videos, please give me a big thumbs up. So until next time, bye for now.